Next up is a healthier version of a decadent treat. Hi, Sharks. My name is Frankie Amsuan. I'm seeking $180,000 for 18% of my company, Coconut Girl. <laughs> I don't know about you, Sharks, but I love summertime. There's nothing better than relaxing by the beach with some creamy ice cream. But let's be honest, these sweet treats don't really help the waistline, especially during bikini season. We all want to indulge and treat ourselves without compromising our healthy lifestyles, right? Well, that's why I created Coconut Girl, the best tasting, dairy-free, gluten-free, nice cream sandwiches that are out of this world. Our gill-free sandwiches are made with all natural, good-free ingredients like organic coconut milk, honey, mm. dates, and maple syrup. So, Sharks, whether you're bumming it on the beach with our beach bum maple, <laughs> saying aloha to aloha chocolate, aloha. <laughs> or want to hang 10 with our hang loose vanilla, Coconut Girl has any flavor you're craving to satisfy your sweet tooth, and all without any of the guilt. Bring that over here. Come so, yeah, Sharks, right. <laughs> who's ready to take on this sweet deal and ride this wave me, with Coconut me, Girl? Me, Are you me, ready? Me, Are you guys ready for some ice cream? Us. I'm so happy Thank about you. This. No calories, right? <laughs> Thank you, Frankie. Thank you, Frankie, a.k.a. Coconut Girl. Feed me. Come on, Frankie. You should have come down here first. <laughs> I have chocolate. Thank the best you. Part. We have one me, of each, me. right? Yes. So you have all three flavors, and they all have the same cookie, which is made out of almond butter. Oh, my God. It's my version of chocolate chip cookie. This is amazing. Thank you. And there's a crunch to the cookie, which is pure so like um, cocoa nibs, no added sugar. So, Frankie, this is no dairy? No dairy made with coconut milk. So isn't the compromise heavy-duty calories? With Not my more products, than ice cream. My main focus is the good for you ingredients. So this is why I created it. I was sick and tired of the health food industry lying about what's healthy, the low fat, no fat, zero sugar, but it was actually making me sick and fat. But so, Frankie, you said yes. this is for the beach. When I put on my Speedo, <laughs> I got to look good. <laughs> <laughs> So how many calories, Frankie, in, in the package right? that Mark is holding? Yes. 250. Yes. It's the so this is actually ice. rather large for 250 calories, but with healthy ingredients. Yes. And the great thing about my products, you know, compared to the conventional ice cream, because of the, the nutritious ingredients, one sandwich will fill you up. Frankie, what are your sales? Yes. So this is year three for me being in retail. Last year, I did 120,000. The year before, I did 60,000. So this year, I'm on track to do $300,000. How are you selling it? So I'm in big box retail stores, just in Southern California at the moment. And you have a co-packer that does this? Um, I did have a co-packer that was producing the baking part. Um, they got really busy, so now I'm back to square one and I'm full on producing everything on my own. How are you gonna scale this business if you don't have a co-packer? Well, the main goal is to obviously scale it up to there. But I've made my products really efficient. When I first started the company, we actually used to do them by pints. And I saw a bunch of my customers making them into ice cream sandwiches. I was like, that's brilliant. So I switched over and just focused on the sandwiches. How did you get into this? What I've made you? I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, you know, I was born in the Philippines. I came here when I was five. I saw my mother work two jobs to give us an opportunity. Um, you know, I struggled specializing in one thing, so I dropped out of UCLA, but I was always passionate about health and fitness. I was always obsessed with creating healthy alternatives to everything that I loved, the sweets that I missed. And you know, so I was just doing it in my home kitchen, and I realized there was a business to it, so I thought of the name, and so I created this Icicle Tricycle, so every weekend I would go to fitness events. So when a grocery store approached me and asked if I did wholesale, I lied. I said, yeah, I do wholesale, so I, That's you know, always the right online, answer. <laughs> and I figured out how to do barcodes, nutrition labels. I just learned on my own, figured it out. What stores are you in? Whole Foods is my biggest account. How many locations? Um, for Whole Foods, 30. But we just got the green light to be in Hawaii, Nevada, and Arizona. And I just got picked up by one of the biggest natural food distributors as of last week. What do you sell them for? What does it cost you to make? So they retail for $4.99 up to $5.49. Is that expensive? No, that's normal. My biggest competitor who launched a dairy-free product actually upped their price to match mine at $5.49. Oh, really? Yes. So you didn't say how much it cost you to make? Oh, it cost me about a dollar. Just a dollar? Just a dollar, wow. yes. And it's you doing everything. I'm doing everything. I have part-time help, but that's why I'm here asking for funding because I need to 
get back to what I'm good at, which is the sales and marketing, and be the face of my brand. You want to find brand. somebody to do logistics and operations for you? Yes. How do you distribute this? It's like a frozen product. So right now, we were a direct distributor up until we got picked up by Unify. So now, they pick up from my facility, and that's the reason why we're now getting the green light to be in Hawaii, because they cover that region. And how so are you Hawaii, selling Arizona. online? Can you ship these? I do not. It's possible. I have customers all over New York. But with the dry people, ice and everything, it just gets it's really expensive. It's just very expensive. costly right yeah. now, and I don't have staff to fulfill individual orders. So we don't do direct to consumers at the moment. So beyond hiring people, what would you use the money for? To lower my food costs. I, okay. I'm confident that I can get it down to 50 cents. So my packaging, cents? 50 cents. My packaging costs. You know what, Frankie? I'm here enough. I love healthy foods, right? It goes really, really well. I don't even want to hear what these people <laughs> have to say. I'll give you the $180,000, but I want 25%. Oh, that's what I was going to offer. <laughs> but okay. you got to tell me, I don't want to even deal with all these meatheads. I like the deal, too. I'm your customer. Frankie, Frankie. I you got to decide right now. If you want to <laughs> listen to other deals, I'm fine with that. But I want to respect Lori. OK, then I'm out. Oh! oh. <laughs> I'll give you one last chance, right? You can take the chance to hear what oh, you say, or wow. you can go with Alyssa's cookies. Are you willing to go down? To what? You know, I'll help you, Frankie. I'll do it for 20%. I'll squeeze Cuban's head for you. Only because he's an idiot. Okay, I'll no. do 20%. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Deal? And he's getting up. Oh, my Deal? God. It's a deal. Done. <laughs> Absolutely kill it. Want a ride? <laughs> no, I'll let you take the ride. I want to see what else you have. <laughs> nice try, Kev. Frankie, you owe me a big Frankie. thank you. I saved you five oh percent. <laughs> nice try, Lori. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> he tried to kill me. There she goes. Bye, well, Frankie. Frankie Ta-da. Congrats. I'll give you my five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> they loved it, and I'm excited to make this the next household brand. I wanted Mark Cuban to be my my shark, my partner, and it's it's happening. So I'm really excited. My name is Katie Jo Evans, and I'm from Bridgeville, Delaware. I had always dreamed of more growing up. I had big dreams of making my hometown proud somehow, some way. When I was in high school, I saw an ad in the newspaper for Miss Delaware National Teen Pageant, and I really saw that as my opportunity to earn some scholarship money, get a higher education, and I ended up taking the crown. I got into my first choice college, the University of Delaware, but one summer, I went back home and met my husband, so I hung up my crown for overalls. My husband's a third generation farmer, and I knew that he loved it so much, and I wanted to be a part of that. Yeah, this one here is good to mark. Yeah. The more acres and varieties of produce we grew, the more we realized that we were having food go to waste just because of cosmetic reasons. In the US alone, there are billions of pounds of wasted produce each year. For us, times were hard, and so reducing food waste was an essential part of the success of our business. For us, it's really personal. When you live and work on a farm, there's really no separation of work and life. It's what keeps us going. We get out of bed in the morning with a passion and a purpose. It's the legacy of our whole family. My name is Katie Jo Evans, and I'm a former beauty queen from Bridgeville, Delaware. And I'm here seeking a $125,000 investment for a 20% equity stake in my business. My family's been farming for more than 75 years. What, you guys didn't think I was a farmer? <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you, things aren't always as they look. <laughs> okay. Take this strawberry, misshapen, bruised, and slightly overripe. But it's still nutritious and delicious. An estimated one in five fruits and veggies never leaves the field, resulting in billions of pounds of wasted produce each year. And that's why we started The Frozen Farmer. <laughs> We make a full line of super premium ice cream, dairy, gluten, and fat-free sorbet, and nice cream, our own part sorbet, part ice cream blend, using misfit fruits and veggies from our own fields. 
the frozen farmer is the richest, the creamiest, the most epic explosion of farm fresh flavor. So sharks, who wants a scoop of this cool business where we turn imperfect produce into profits? <laughs> I like it. We're gonna so try these this? These are our samples. These are your samples. Mmm, really good. I think I just had honeydew. Wow, it tastes Great. just like a honeydew melon, exactly. That's because that's all, really all that's inside the container. Wow. It's fresh fruit, a little bit of sugar maybe added. Very good. That's wow. all that's so all that's really in there. low sugar content. Can we see your packaging? Absolutely. Yeah, it's good. Oh wow. The orange creamsicle was really good. Yeah, and there's only 50 calories per serving in the honeydew. 200 calories in the whole container. In the sorbet. Pretty good. It's really good. Wow. Mm, yeah, this stuff is good. Katie Cho, where do you sell this? How do you sell it? So we sell our products in 70 grocery chain stores. Giant Foods is our major grocery buyer. My husband and I um, own a third generation family farm and we supply Giant with our produce. How long has this part of the business been operable? So we established the Frozen Farmer in 2015. We went to Ice Cream University. We've got the coolest degree in the world. Where is that? <laughs> it, it's in New Jersey. Wow. Of course. So we learned the art of making ice cream. You can tell. Yes. Because these are really fantastic. Fantastic. Artisanal. Thank you. So in 2019, we've already done $310,000 in sales. Our current container average across the board is $1.75. So that's what it costs you to make? Correct. And what that's do you high. sell it for? We wholesale for $3.30. And they retail for $4.49 to $5.99 on the shelf. So what percentage of your sales are through the grocery channel? So uh, only 15% of our sales are actually grocery sales. Oh. We did $46,000 in grocery sales this year. The rest of our sales have been wholesale and on farm. So you, you're not using like a commercial kitchen? We do hand pack and hand produce everything in house. And that's why I'm here today because we can't keep up at this pace. Right now we have so many grocery customers knocking at the door. So you said that you were a pageant queen? I was Miss Delaware National Teenager in 2005. The pageant world to farming couldn't have been starkly different than I ever would have imagined it. You didn't grow up on a farm? I did not grow up on a farm, so I actually married into farming. I'm from a small town, and, um, sorry. My husband's father was so much more to our town than a farmer. He died in the line of duty and as a volunteer firefighter, and he left the farm to my husband. And so here we were, two young farmers in our 20s, and um, there were a lot of hard years that we really worried if we were gonna lose the family farm. But we just hustled as hard as we could, and before we knew it, we had grown an operation that used to be 65 acres and just a dream to 2,000 acres wow. is what we till today. What do you want from a shark? I want you to help me take it to a co-packer level. I don't have the overhead capital right now to even purchase the outright container cost that we're gonna need to run through the co-packer. I also need some industry expertise. I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I'm a farmer's wife. I'm a former beauty queen. I don't know everything there is to know about the CPG industry, but I have gotten us this far. Oh, I have learned impressive. and I am learning every single day. It is impressive, day. Katie Jo. I think probably the most underestimated value in every great entrepreneur that I've ever worked with is their ability to make great judgments. Because there's two, three, four, five ways of doing everything all along the way. The concern I have for what your gift is, which is enthusiasm and the great ability to produce a phenomenal product, all of us couldn't get enough of this. That's your gift. And you can do so well as a cottage industry doing that. But I think to have the kind of judgments it's going to take to get this to be a giant company, I don't think it's really what you are going to necessarily do well. So for those oh. concerns, I'm out. With, with all due respect, Barbara, mm -hmm. thank you for that so much. But I'll be quite honest, there's no one else on the grocery shelf anywhere doing what we're doing and being the true farm-to-table operation. Okay. And the farmer using their own end product wait, wait, themselves. Wait, wait, the ice cream business is so hard. You have to convince all these grocers or retailers to give you refrigerated space. But I really don't. Our retail space has been given to us. Why is yeah, that? Why is, is, it, that? Is, it, is it cause they you're already in business They know the quality of our them? produce. Their customers are coming in saying, I want Evans Farms produce. It's the best in the world. You but know, that's I local cause they know you, Katie Joe. You get the edge because it's a great product and they know the quality that comes from your farm. 
Once you get to Dallas and New York and everywhere else, you don't have that home court advantage. You've seen my hustle here. I'm unable to hustle this product yet. We're almost at production capacity on farm. I've got to get to a co-packer level. You know what? I, th I think you're getting a lot of demand because you're a local hero. Um, and it is gonna be very hard to scale. This is a super tough business. One of my best friends builds the refrigeration for Giant and, and Key Food. And he always told me, promise me you will never get into refrigerated goods. <laughs> because it's, it's hard to ship these things. These trucks are a lot of money, as you know, it, and it's very, very, very difficult. I think you're gonna be okay, though, on the farm and locally with doing what you do. Just be just as energetic as you always are. And I wish you luck, but I'm out. Thank you, Damon. Yeah, Katie, Joe, the problem is, to, to, to Damon's point, Refrigerator is hard, frozen's even worse because there's even less space available. Guys, I love hard. I have no doubt, right? I was you, born I, for hard. Look, Katie, look, what you've accomplished is great. What I don't think you have a grasp on is what it's gonna take to scale nationally. I know you wanna fight, it's not a fight, I wanna Small fight. Small label ice creams are the up and coming mark. You look at the margins, they're the and only you're right, thing there, and there's, there's 30 that's carrying of them. the ice cream industry right now. There's Big box brands are, the, the would, margins I, and profits you know are down. When 10,000 people are doing the same thing, I don't wanna be the 10,000 and first. Katie Joe, I'm out. Thank you. Thank you, congrats. Katie Joe, I love the misfit food ideas, if these are great. rejected by their peers. That strawberry got kicked <laughs> off the branch. <laughs> I look at it as a very difficult business to invest in because of its structure. Mr. Wonderful, you don't you don't like easy stuff either. No, no, You're no. You're up for the challenge. Three sharks are out. Katie Jo has only two more chances for a deal for her ice cream and sorbet company, The Frozen Farmer. It's a family business. But I mean, business. who's gonna give you better pricing no, on I, the ingredients I, I than the farmer themselves? I love themselves. the product, I love I your so enthusiasm. I would so sell this but I, can't, I can't invest in every business. An ice cream is just not the place I wanna be. I wish you the best, I'm out. Lori. You know, I'm not a huge ice cream person, but I have to tell you, these ice creams were the best I've ever had in my entire life. The orange creamsicle, I thought was one of the creamiest tasting, best tasting things ever. The sorbets are phenomenal. So I think that your product is fantastic. I think with the right packaging, you really need your packaging to pop. I mean, even being called misfit fruit, sorbet is kind of interesting because people who care about the environment and not wasting and using everything would get that message almost immediately from that name. It's a great name. But it's really, really, really hard to be in the ice cream business, as they all were saying. But yet, you have something that I think is like blue ribbon. I'm just not sure. Come on, Lori. One, I will help you redo your packaging, all right, no matter what so that you will have a great label and I'll help you with the tr name and the trademark and that. Okay. I'm gonna offer you the 125,000, 30%, but I will give you the money if we can land a major national chain with the product. Well, it's good you said that because I've already had talks with Harris Teeter and Wegman. 125,000. For 30%. I wouldn't think about yes. it too long. Like Katie a Wegman. I will do it. I can't wait. I'm sorry. I know I'm supposed to negotiate. I'm sorry. Oh, my. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank Katie Joe. Thank, Thank you all Thank for you. your time. Thank you very this much. has been Good luck. First into the tank is hidden goodness in a favorite treat. Sharks, my name is Jessica Levison, founder of Peekaboo Organics. We make super premium, indulgent ice cream with a hidden ingredient. Now I want to challenge you to a taste test to see if you can figure out what that secret ingredient is. Place before you are five original flavors. Please dig in and see if you can figure it out. 
Okay. All right. I love That's challenge. interesting. I want you to tell me all the different things that you taste. Lori, what do you taste in the first flavor? Chocolate. Robert, tell me what you're tasting. Heaven. <laughs> what if I told you there's hidden veggies in every single flavor? I would say you're lying. <laughs> Peekaboo. What's the one in the middle? This is all That's vegetarian? It's dairy ice cream with hidden veggies that you cannot see or taste. Really? Absolutely. So it's real ice cream with vegetables thrown in? Absolutely. So the mint chip actually has two cups of spinach in every container of the mint chip. Wow. The strawberry has 14 baby carrots in every container. The chocolate has 10 cauliflower florets. The vanilla has the equivalent of a zucchini and a half. Wow. And the cotton candy has three baby peas. You haven't told us what you came here for. OK. <laughs> so what do you want? So I'm asking for $800,000 for 8% of the company. Wow. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. You must no, have kidding. enormous sales. I'm excited to tell you about them. So we launched less than a year ago. And to date, we're in almost 900 stores. Wow. And we're going to be in 3,000 stores by the end of the year. What are sales? Wow. Wow, so remarkable. sales to, since we launched is $450,000. That's it? You're asking for a 10 million valuation? Innovative, high growth food startups are trading at four to six times Ugh. revenue multiple. <laughs> oh, come on. This is ice cream with carrots in it. We're projecting to end the year with 2.6 million in sales. We're in Whole Foods, Safeway, ShopRite, Weiss Markets, How Lazy did you Acres, get to Frizzle all these products. places? So were you I at hustled. a show, like a food show, and all of a sudden, everybody picked you up? That's what happened. Would you like, I can hand out pints. It's cane yeah. sugar, isn't it? Absolutely. So you're putting vegetables in. I'm wondering if you're lowering no fat, if you're lowering it's in, sugar. It's indulgent ice cream. OK. So your pitch is, look, you're going to eat the ice cream anyways. Why not add some vegetables to it? Because particularly kids have a hard time eating beets. So I'm going to feed them beets in a hidden form of delicious ice cream. I mean, it's a parenting hack. <laughs> How did you come up with the idea to put vegetables in ice cream? Ice cream's always been my passion. But really, I created this because I have kids. I made it for my children and parents everywhere, because the reality is the kids don't like vegetables. Peekaboo really bridges the gap between what we can't get enough of, which is ice cream, and what we don't get enough of, which is veggies. Jessica, I think my kids would love this. They for sure would love it. <laughs> have you tried it with kids? Like I would love to show you. I have a commercial, actually, that we filmed. Oh. Here comes the next flavor. Tell me all the different things you might taste in there. I think I taste strawberry in there. It's really good. <laughs> it's, it's just. Insane. What do you think about the spinach in this one? There's spinach in this one. How do you like the beets in it? There's beets in ice cream. There's zucchini in there. <laughs> There's not literally a vegetable taste in here. There's just like an ice cream taste. I don't like spinach, but I love this. Piggy boo. Fabulous ad. It's great idea. Yeah. Fantastic. Really idea. Jessica, how much have you raised? So I did an initial round earlier this year, and I raised $1.2 million. $1.2 million. What That's valuation it. on that? So it was it was a convertible note round, since it was difficult to determine a valuation. But well, you put a cap discount, on it? It was, right? a it was a $5 million cap. $5 million, $5 million cap. cap. What are you going to do in sales next year? A very conservative projection for next year would be $5 million. Let's Does just think this through. anybody else sell yep. ice cream with vegetables? We're the only company on the for market that sells. now. The big companies trade at 7 to 11 times free cash flow, OK? When new, new entrants come in and prove a concept, the big guys say, oh, look, put beets in our existing product already and crush you. The trend is that larger companies are really acquiring smaller, innovative, Unless it's high cheaper like to do it themselves. I can innovate and I can pivot really quickly. Is your goal to sell? My goal is to sell. Well, this is something we hear very often with very savvy, very smart people that come on Shark Tank that they're building so fast, and their end goal is to sell it. My practical experience to date, without exception, has been every single business I invested in that had that as an end goal, either went out of business or, in the end, almost folded up their shop. I'm so suspicious of that. Okay. I, I, you know, I just think it's a cautionary tale, because I have learned to interpret your pitch here as a very bad sign, and it's pretty scary. So for those reasons, I'm out. Thank you, Barbara. The large players in Fraser that own that category don't just roll over when Jessica shows up. <laughs> oh, yeah, take my freezer space from me. And by the time you get to 50 million in sales, which is basically nothing in the ice cream space, you're going to have two or three major players crushing you like a frozen cockroach. <laughs> I'm aggressive with you now because the ask is a joke. <laughs> it's a joke.
$800,000 for 8% BS. Are you kidding? $800,000, I would want 60% of this <laughs> company. So obviously, I'm out. Thank you. Jessica, it's, it's incredibly impressive what you've built. My issue is, you know, we're sharks. <laughs> we're here to help you build a business where we both profit. This isn't a vulture fund. To come out and say that in one year, you created $10 million worth of value. I struggle with the concept of creating $10 million in value in one year. Sure, it happens. It happens in tech. I, I don't see it here, and I, I don't trust that piece of it. I'm out. OK, thank you. You know, along those same lines, Jessica, I have my rules for success, right? If you go online and look up Mark Cuban's rules for success, number one is don't start a business unless it's an obsession. OK. Rule number two is if you have an exit strategy, it's not an obsession. Wow. And for those great. reasons, I'm out. OK, I would just like to address that because I think That's a great rule. Anybody that knows me knows this is my passion. Um, is everybody out? Except you. That me? But, but I would like and to explain the valuation. And then there was one. First of all, I'm going to explain to you. Do you know how a diamond's made? Why don't okay. you just make her an offer without all the BS, Lori? <laughs> stop it. You have no competition. Just make her an offer without all the BS. Why would I tell her this? Tell us about the diamond tomorrow. Quiet. You squeeze I'm it. gonna tell you how a diamond's made. The way a diamond is made is you take carbon and you put it under intense heat and pressure in the earth and it crystallizes. And then they take that out of the earth and they facet it and they cut it and it turns into a beautiful diamond. I think sitting here today, you reminded me of the diamond. Oh. Because oh <laughs> under intense heat and pressure, Give me an everybody here, no, everybody here threw a lot of crap at you <laughs> and made it very difficult for you. I think that you were put under intense heat and pressure here today, and I watched you. And now you're and a diamond. And I think that you did an excellent job. Yeah. I think that you had smart answers for everything. I think you held yourself. I like what you're doing, but I think that in my vision, I think that you need to improve it even a little more. So you may not like my offer, and you can tell me goodbye. Okay. But you're a diamond. But I'm a diamond. I would want, if I invest in you, to have another version in that actually is low calorie, low fat, healthier option, add the vegetables. You have to be willing to be open to brand extension and to creating something that would fit within your brand like that. There are those that like high fat and sugar, and they'll always like that. And then there are those that want to right. be I beg you, give her the option. offer. <laughs> what I'm going to do is this. This this year? I'm going to give you a loan instead of an investment. Ouch. OK, because it's risky. Your ask is huge. Everybody said it, right? I'm going to give you a loan instead of an investment, 6% interest, three year. And I still want 5% equity. Well, you could really do well with a strategic Straight partner. Offer. Um, it's risky here. I'm a believer in when you go healthy, go healthy. And I feel that this is halfway there. I, think I like the offer. concept, but I'm halfway there. So you could say no, that's fine. But for me to do it and step in with you, that's what it's going to take. Bam, only 5% equity you have to give up. What do you say? First, I'd like to thank you for being the only offer. That's right. <laughs> I can oh. give you an offer to do it. fellow oh. obnoxious no, but, but sharks the truth is, at I this think moment. I, I, really, the lane for me is indulgent ice cream. I think there's other competitors in there that do what you're describing. They do really well. And that's Maybe a you're not a diamond market. after all. <laughs> I, hopefully, I still am. But you, you don't want to um, go really, there. I appreciate your offer, but I, I would decline for that reason. You just don't want to expand the product line. I, I, I believe, really, we're positioned as an indulgent. And we have to listen and, to all that No, first. I get it. OK, I Jessica, it. just and to give you to another be... offer so you left with two, I would do the $800,000 loan at 9%, and I want all 8% equity. Then you get Mr. Wonderful. That's actually a pretty good offer, too. But that's a real offer. I do that deal. There's no downside Commercial to that. I'm not putting any covenants on this stuff in terms of what you do. I'm here really for equity, an equity investment, not so much the loan. Then you should have brought a valuation that was more realistic. I think you <laughs> I got mean, pushed back. I mean, you can counter back. on the valuation. The, the valuation is very difficult. Everybody gave you a hard time on that. You're right. very impressive. The product tastes great. Thank you. There are risks, obviously. Yeah. But the way to approach this, given how, what we have to do as investors, is it's got to be debt, because there's no realistic valuation that makes sense at this point. But it also tells us how bad you want a shark. 
Right. You I, know, I, everything that we're offering you right. tells us something as well. But I can finance it. You don't get yeah, a shot, Yeah, but it's though. not the same. I want someone that believes in the concepts. He's giving you 800000 Of course he believes in you. And right. I, want, I want to get, to get it, back, it back, back, too. His equity. You have no interest in venture debt, right? That's what you're saying? No. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate Congrats. it. Congrats. Good luck. I do think the Sharks made a mistake today. I mean, everyone's got their jam and, you know, maybe it wasn't theirs. And, you know, obviously they thought the valuation was high. But I, for sure they made a mistake. For sure they made a mistake.